Hi, my name is Amin and in this video I'm going to show you how I created this cover here using Adobe Illustrator. Now if you want to follow along with this tutorial by using Adobe Illustrator yourself, you may do so or alternatively you can use a similar software such as Affinity Designer or Canva. Now the first thing I do before creating any cover is look for inspiration. It's extremely difficult to just sit with a blank canvas and just come up with an idea of creating covers. Now as you can see here I created this cover in October so I can't exactly remember how I found inspiration for this but most likely it's either by browsing through Amazon or by going to a graphics website such as Vecteezy and then searching for something related to the niche. So let's get started with the tutorial so the first thing I'm going to do is open up Adobe Illustrator and then I'm going to click on new file and then over here I'm just going to rename it to cover one the size of my books already selected so it's going to be in inches and then six times nine inches over here I'm just going to leave it as it is so so it's not going to have a bleed and then over here for color mode you can choose either CMYK or RGB I've tried using both RGB and CMYK and to be honest I haven't found any difference when I ordered the books so I'm just going to leave it as CMYK since that's the preferred color mode for print and then I'm just going to click on create so you can see here I have my blank canvas and I'm going to create my cover. I already have both of my graphics open so I'm just going to download the first one. And once that's downloaded I'm going to right click on it and then open it up with Adobe Illustrator. Now I'm going to copy this graphics onto my cover file by clicking on Command C to copy and then Command V to paste. I'm just going to resize it. Now there's a clipping mask added to this graphics so I'm going to remove the clipping mask by clicking on command option and then 7. Now I'm going to delete this background here so I'm just going to delete it and then I'm going to reapply the clipping mask by selecting the square here the graphics and then clicking on command and then 7. Now I'm going to create four copies of this so this is the first one so number 2 and then with both of them selected I'm going to create another copy so now I have four of them and you can see that they align perfectly so I'm holding on to option to copy and then shift to keep it aligned and then I'm just going to select all of them and then group them together by clicking on command and then G now you can see that I have my graphics here and I can move them as a collective unit now I'm going to move over to my artboard and create a rectangle and then for now I'm just going to choose a random color. Now I'm going to place this background over my cover and you can see that it's ended up behind the rectangle so I'm going to click on command shift and then the close bracket button to bring it forward or alternatively what you can do is right click on it arrange and then bring to front. Now what you want to do is you want to resize this to a size that goes well with the cover so for me this size seems ideal. The next thing I'm going to do is select the rectangle that's behind the graphics. So I'm going to select it all and then by holding on to shift I'm going to deselect this one and then click on command C to copy and then command V to paste. So now I have another copy. Now I'm going to use this copy to create a clipping mask. Clipping mask just means getting rid of this excess graphics that's on the sides. So I'm going to select both of them and then click on command and then 7. So now you can see the graphics is tidy and the excess bits are cut off. Now I'm going to apply my preferred color to the background. So I'm going to select both of them, deselect the top one and then over here I'm going to apply my preferred color which is this one here. So you can see this code here for the color. Now I'm going to click on OK. Now I'm going to create a copy of this cover for the back of the book. So I'm going to click on document setup, edit artboards and then create a copy by holding on to the option key and then just dragging it across. Now I'm going to group both the graphics and the background together so I'm going to select both of them and then click on command G and then do the same for the back cover as well. So now I can move them as a collective unit. Now I'm going to head over to Vecteezy.com and download my second graphics which is this one here so I'm just going to click on download. Now I'm going to open it. So once again, I'm going to open it with Adobe Illustrator. 
and then at this stage what you want to do is you want to choose one of these and just to mention you shouldn't copy this cover or anybody else's cover if you do choose to follow along with the tutorial make sure you create your own cover and preferably for your own niche as well so with this selected I'm going to click on command shift and 7 to remove the clipping mask and then I'm going to single out this graphics here so I'm going to click on command C to copy and then I'm going to paste it over here so I'm just going to find an empty space and I'm just going to paste it now what I'm going to do is just tweak this a little bit so there's a few elements here which I don't want so I'm just going to remove them so I'm going to click on command shift and G to ungroup this and then I'm going to remove the elements that I don't want Now what I'm going to do is change the color of this panel to white. And then you can see here that this part of the image has a gradient. So I'm going to remove the gradient and just apply a flat color. So with this selected, I'm going to click on this eyedropper tool here. And then I'm just going to click over here to apply a flat color. And then I'm going to do the same with the eyes and the mouth as well. So with the eyedropper tool selected, I'm going to... I'm going to use this color here, the same color as the legs. I'm going to adjust the size of this a little bit. And then I'm just going to group it all together. And this is another example of modifying images. Some websites, they require that you modify their images and you don't use them as is. So by doing something like this, you've changed the original image and you've made it into your own graphics. So I'm just going to make this smaller and then apply it to my cover. What I'm going to do now is just ungroup this again. So I'm going to click on Command, Shift and then G to ungroup. And then I'm just going to create a group just for this image, uh, this emoji. So I'm going to select all of it and then click on Command and G. And then I'm just going to move it across a little bit. I'm going to remove this shadow here. And then I'm just going to chop off this excess bit on the side. So I'm going to create a rectangle on top of it. Change the color. And then with the rectangle and the panel selected, I'm going to click on this button here, this shape builder tool. And then I'm going to click and hold the option key on my keyboard. And you can see that the plus changes to a minus. And then I'm just going to get rid of these panels. I'm just going to make this slightly longer and then group together the emoji and the panel by having both of them selected and then clicking on command and then G. Now I'm going to add text on top of it. So the title of my book is going to be My Emotions Journal. So I'm just going to type this in. I'm going to click on this selection tool here just to make it a little bit bigger. And then over here I'm going to type My. I'm going to click on the selection tool again. And then by clicking and holding onto option, I'm just going to drag it underneath to create a copy. And then I'm just going to type Emotions here. And then I'm going to do the same underneath and type in journal. I'm going to make them bigger. Place them appropriately. And then I'm going to change the font to my preferred font which is called childhood style. Now I'm just going to play around with this to make the text stand out and ideal for my cover. So I'm going to make this word smaller because it's not that important. And then these two words, emotions journal, I'm going to make them bigger. And the reason for this is because this is what the book is and it should stand out compared to the rest of the text. Now I'm going to change the color of these to, to this red color here. So I'm going to click on the eyedropper tool and then click over here. Now I'm going to add drop shadow to this to make it stand out. So by having all of them selected, I'm going to click on effect, stylize, drop shadow. And then I'm going to add in my preferred specifications, which in my case is 15%. And then over here for X, y, X, X and Y offset 0 0.01 inches. And then for blur, the same number. And then I'm going to click on OK. So you can see here that by having drop shadow added, it stands out a lot more. 
So now I've completed my front cover and I have my back cover ready. So what I'm going to do now is just group all of these elements together by selecting all of them and then clicking on command and then G. So now I'm going to download my cover template and as you can see here I've already put in all of the details for my cover. So I'm just going to click on calculate dimensions and then click on download template. So I have my template on my desktop here. So I'm going to head back over to my cover, click on file, place, find my template, select here and then click on place. So I'm just going to head over to the side here and just place it somewhere. And then over here I'm going to click on embed. Now I'm going to create an artboard underneath this cover. So I'm going to click on document setup edit artboards and then just click over here to create an artboard and then what you want to do is just make sure that the width and the height match the width and the height and as you can see here that the height matches the template but there's a little bit of a difference in the width so I'm just going to adjust that the width is 12.498 so I'm just going to change it here I'm going to lock this into place so I'm going to click on this button here click on this small arrow locate the locate the template which is this one here you can see that there's a there's a blue square on it because i have it selected and then i'm going to click on this empty space here to lock it into place now i'm going to add in a spine so i'm going to click on the rectangle tool and then add in a spine and the width of my spine is 0 0.248 inches so i'm going to change it to that and then click on enter and then I'm just going to place it in the middle by clicking on this horizontal align center button. And then I'm just going to adjust the height of it by zooming in and then adjusting it. Now I'm going to add in the front and back of my cover. So I'm going to select the front cover, click on command C to copy. And then I'm going to place it on my template by clicking on command V to paste. I'm going to click on this button here, this horizontal align right button and then the vertical align top button and then I'm going to make it bigger to match the size of the cover. And in the meantime what I'm going to do is change the, change the color of the spine to yellow. Now I'm going to do the same with the back cover. So command C to copy and then command V to paste. I'm going to click on this button here and then this button and then once again I'm going to make it bigger to match the size of the template. And then you can see here that the spine's gone behind both sides of the cover so I'm going to right click on it, go to arrange and then bring to front. Now I'm going to group together all of the parts of the cover so I'm going to select all of them, both sides and the spine and then click on command G to group. So now you can see I can move the entire cover as a collective unit. Now I'm going to adjust the opacity to see if everything's in place. So I'm going to change this to 50% and then click on enter. So now you can see that the spine's in place. You can see the cover's nicely aligned and neat and nothing important goes outside the bleed. I'm just going to restore the opacity back to 100%. And then what I'm going to do now is remove the template underneath. So I'm going to click on this layers button here and you can see I've got the template locked into place. So I'm just going to click on this eye button here to just hide it. And now if I move the cover from top of the artboard, you can see that the template's hidden. Now I'm going to create a copy of this artboard by clicking on document setup, edit artboards. And then by clicking and holding onto the option key, I'm just going to create a copy. Now what I'm going to do is flatten this image here because the KDP guidelines suggest that you should flatten your covers. So I'm going to click on object and then I'm going to click on rasterize. And then click on OK. Now the entire cover is flattened so that it doesn't consist of individual elements. This also means that you can no longer edit this cover and because of this I've left a copy of the cover just in case in the future I need to go back and edit something. Now I'm going to export the cover by clicking on file, save as, selecting PDF over here 
and then for the range since it's the fourth artboard I'm going to change it to four I'm going to click on save and then I'm going to click on save PDF and now you can see I have my completed cover ready to upload onto KDP and then for this particular cover I also created a blue version as you can see here and that's it for this video if you enjoyed it then don't forget to like it and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos like this